The Two Popes is a new Netflix movie, and it is about a pope and another pope that talk. That's it. It's a very simple premise for a movie. It's a very, very simple story. It's inspired by true events, and it's not particularly bad that this premise is so simple. In fact, there are many movies that have great little simple premises that end up being really, really good. But this movie, I can't say I was particularly interested in when it was getting pre uh, previews and trailers and getting announced for Netflix. I, I found it to be kind of a bland premise. I wasn't super interested in it. And then I found out who the writer was, and it's the man behind Darkest Hour and Bohemian Rhapsody, which are based on true stories, just like this one, which are incredibly boring, bland, Oscar baiting movies with little that impresses outside of some strong central performances. And so when I saw that, I went, oh, I know exactly what Two Popes is gonna be. That. Incredibly bland, Oscar baiting with strong central performances. I've always been interested in trying to find a, um, projects that combine the epic and the intimate. The reason I ended up watching it wasn't to prove that I was right about it or anything like that. In fact, the reason I wanted to watch it was just because of the award buzz. Which, again, I saw coming, but every time a movie gets award buzz, Oscar buzz, my brain just turns off and starts saying, watch it, watch it, watch it, on repeat until I watch it just because it has award buzz. I don't know why, but any Oscar-nominated movie, I feel like I have to watch them before the award show. So I did. I watched it. And it is exactly what I thought it would be. The way you live is a criticism. Your shoes are a criticism. You don't like my shoes? <laughs> but I wouldn't say that this is a bad movie. In fact, the two central performances of Anthony Hopkins and Jonathan Price are superb. They really do carry this movie, and even when they have some subpar and truly uninspired dialogue, they do deliver it with conviction and earnestness that makes it hard to hate it. Even if it is not great dialogue, they just deliver it so well that it kind of works. Tango is dance. I'm Argentinian. Oh. Tango and football are compulsory. Oh. Which is very strange, but the word uninspired is probably the best word to describe the movie as a whole. Every element of this movie is so boilerplate, so surface level, that there's little to really like about it, and even less to get upset about. It's just bland the movie. But there is one element of this movie that is shockingly bad. I'm not super upset about it because I find it comical. And that's the cinematography. The cinematography is dreadful in this movie. And in an age of smartphone cameras, 4K resolution, and high dynamic range color, it's kind of hard to make a movie that looks bad. And yet this one looks bad. The first little bit of this film is fine, though, I guess. It shows the cardinals of the Catholic Church gathering to vote on a new pope. We see Anthony Hopkins and Jonathan Price not exactly hit it off. From this moment, I knew exactly what this movie would be and exactly how it would play out. Because you've got Anthony Hopkins, who's a super conservative, puts the faith before people kind of person, and then you've got Jonathan Price, who's super liberal and puts people kind of before the faith. And so I knew from that moment that it would be about these two characters debating their vastly different ideologies and then becoming friends inevitably, despite them possibly disagreeing. I knew that that's what it would be, and it was. This is the way to Roma? No, no I mean, it's, uh, the Pope is in his summer residence. <sighs> summer residence, uh... Honestly, when Jonathan Price is heading to the new Pope's summer getaway, Anthony Hopkins' summer getaway, I was kind of ready to turn it off because it was just so bland. It was just so uninspired that I was like, okay, I get the point. I don't need to see any more of this. But to be fair, there is some much needed and kind of unexpected backstory that helps paint these characters in a much more realistic way that I did like later on in the movie. You forgot to love the people you were meant to protect. Yes. But it is in this scene, in this summer getaway debate between the two characters scene, where the cinematography goes from kind of documentary styled for not 
great reasons to just completely off the rails. It's, it's uh, absurd. It's crazy. It seems like the director or cinematographer just couldn't keep still behind the camera or in the editing room. It's constantly cutting to different shots, bizarre angles, or even unnecessary shaky cam. It feels like this movie desperately wants to be a documentary, so sometimes it shoots it like that, and other times it shoots it like a normal movie. It's quite jarring, especially when nothing outside of talking is happening. You went to Abbey Road? No, 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 it would not have been appropriate. Film has a language to it, and this movie is very clearly not fluent in that language. Because just when you feel like a scene should have some stillness to it, it just goes into violent shaky cam for no good reason. Or when you think it's gonna just do some simple shot reverse shot, it cuts to an angle behind some tree branches like a horror movie. It's utterly baffling that this was shot like this and makes the movie feel slapped together as a result. The movie feels like it was just a hodgepodge thrown together at the last minute because of the way it's edited and presented. I mean, storyboarding, planning shots is crucial to a movie, especially to movies like this where dialogue and simple setups dominate the runtime. You have to know what you're going to do in those scenes because then you will get to set and then just shoot a scene from behind a tree for no reason. We knew there were priests, bishops, great men of the church who preyed on children. And what did we do? We, just... we heard their confession, then moved them on to another parish where they could start all over again. There are so many directors that shoot nothing but scenes like this, and the difference between this movie and movies with directors that know what they're doing is incredibly telling. I mean, I've talked about the coin toss scene in No Country for Old Men uh, a lot, in, in extensively in my review of that, but that scene and most of the scenes in this movie are so vastly different in the way that they're presented, and the way that the coin toss scene is presented in No Country for Old Men is just leaps and bounds better. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo. The whole scene is a variety of just two shots, a close-up and a medium. They shot reverse shot and repeat. Add in terrific performances and snappy editing, and this scene that features nothing but talking is the most intense thing ever. Imagine if every five seconds it was cutting to different angles, like a shaky cam wide shot, or a shot from behind the candy, or a shot from outside looking in. It would completely decimate the scene's tone and pace. I mean, look at this scene. Imagine if this scene was just a couple of simple shots. A wide shot slowly pushing in, a medium shot reverse, and a close-up shot reverse. It would be kinda nice, but instead it's just a nightmarish blend of poor editing, horrible shot selection, and overly fast pacing. It just doesn't work. I cannot feel the presence of God. I do not hear his voice. Do you understand me? No, no you're mistaken. You are a mistake. I believe in God. I pray to God. Silence! And that's this Two Popes movie, pretty much through and through. I mean, it's basically just a variety of s scenes of these two popes chatting with each other in some different locations with a little backstory sprinkled in there. And that's it, kind of it, which is too bad because the, this premise of the future pope and the pat current pope just kind of talking about their ideologies and their beliefs and what they feel like the church should be moving towards or moving away from is kind of interesting. And I feel like they could have done a lot with that. And even in the state that it's in, there is a lot here that works that I think is good to even great. But at the end of the day, a lot of these great scenes are undercut or completely decimated by utterly terrible pacing, bad editing, and dreadful shot selection. And that's sort of it. I, I mean, the movie, I feel like, again, could do something with this premise. It could do something with a Coen Brothers attached as a director or someone similarly talented. I feel like this could be hugely elevated by who's behind the camera, who's in the editing room, who's directing. But as it is, it's just a shameful waste of an interesting premise and two pretty good performances. Which is why I'm not sure that I can recommend this movie. Or really even say to try it because it's just painfully boring and dreadful in its presentation so
Yeah.